So in this lesson, we are going to be connecting to the Reddit API where we're going to be looking through all of this JSON data and extracting out usable data that we can use within our web page. So when our web page loads, we can make a request to the endpoint and return back a title, an image, and a web URL. And this is all contained within the data object. As we're looping through, we make the connection. We retrieve back the array of items and then looping through that array of items, there's quite a lot of information that's contained in here. So we select from this information, selecting the properties with the different values that we want to make use of within the code, within the web application. So this is an open API that you can practice. And there's more information at reddit forward slash dev forward slash API. And there is also an API that you do need the OAuth in in order to connect to it. So this gives you more flexibility with the content that you're retrieving back from the API endpoint. In this lesson, we're going to be connecting to the Reddit API using our HTML code and with the button interactions and outputting the results onto the page. I've created a brand new JS file called it apps10.js, selected the page elements. So that's the two buttons, the output area. So we're going to select those and then make a request to the endpoint, which is going to be the Reddit API. So the APIs are controlled by the server. They're outputting all of this JSON data. And there's several different open APIs that you can connect to to practice with. And of course, they do change. They do tend to change. So when you are connecting to someone else's server endpoint JSON file, you have to be prepared for any changes that might take place on that server. So this is the endpoint that we're going to be connecting to. So that's the reddit.com forward slash r forward slash test forward slash top forward slash JSON, which is going to return it back as JSON and then limit of five. So there's a lot of content here and it's really hard to read through it. So once we get it within the JavaScript code, that's going to make it a lot easier to sift through and break apart that whole object. So let's go through here and we're going to set the URL. And this is the URL that we're connecting to. So it's going to be a static URL. Add to the button. So this is to the button. We'll add the on click event. And then when the button gets clicked, we'll make our fetch request to the URL, returning it back once we do get a response back. And once we do have the response object back, this is going to be converted into JSON structure. So it is currently within a JSON structure. And once again, you do have to check the endpoint to see what it's being returned back as. Not all of them get returned back JSON. They could be returned back as text. So now once we've got the data, then we can make use of the data. And for now, what we'll do is we'll output it into the console and then we'll break it apart in the console, select out values that we want to make use of. So let's establish the connection. And we want to look for the content that's contained within an array. So right now we do have a data and within the data, there's a array called children. So that's the one that we want to loop through. So selecting data and then children, we want to get to where we have an array. And then that way we can loop through the contents that are contained within the array. So this array has multiple items that contain data as well. So now we can start looping through there, creating a function, and I'll just call it get data and we'll place within this object data. And then within the console, we can output the data so that we have a, something to reference. And then now we can use the for each loop to loop through each one of the items and output it on the page. So the items are also going to contain an object called data. So for the item data, and let's see what we get now. So we click it and we need to send it over to the get data. And that's the array that we're sending to it. So click the button and that returns back each one of the items separated. So from here, we can make a selection of what data we want to make use of. So make this a little bit larger and there's quite a bit of information. So it's a fairly complex object and I'm going to be selecting the title. Uh, as well as the thumbnail. And then we can output those two items onto the page. And there's also the URL. So let's select those. We've got the thumbnail. We also have the title. And then just uh, check to see 
what the other property name is, and that's going to be the URL. So let's output these into the page where we've selected the page element, and that's going to be output. And I'll create an HTML element that we can construct. And then for the output, the inner HTML will be whatever we've got contained within the HTML. So as we loop through the data for the item, I'm going to set the item data to an element. And this is just a variable. So this is going to make it a little bit easier to read the contents that we're outputting. Now you don't have to do this. You can select the full item data and then thumbnail title or URL. Uh, so in this case, I'm just doing it this way because it's going to be a little bit easier to read through. So set up the opening and closing divs. And then within the opening and closing divs, I set an H3. And this is going to use the element title value. I can close that off and that will close off the H3. Let's uh, break the string and add to the HTML. So it's again a little bit easier to read through. And this is just a continuation of what we have. So let's uh, create an image with a source and we'll use the source from the element thumbnail and return to back that as the image source content. And we'll close that line and then add one more line where we're going to update the URL. So here we're adding the URL, which we can put it within an href. And this is going to be linking out to the element URL. And I'll set the target as blank so it opens up in a new page. That should be an equal sign there. And we can also maybe output the URL as well within the page so that we see that where we're going. And close off the anchor tag and then also close off the div. And we can also, to make it a little bit neater within our HTML code, we can copy and paste it this way. So now we can remove out the comment and we'll try it out and see what we get listed within the page. So it looked like the images weren't loading properly. Uh, so let's uh, take a look and we'll see what happened there. So it looks like we've got some pro issues there with the way that uh, code was added. So take a look through there. We've got the image source and actually didn't close off the uh, image tag with the quote. I also updated the Reddit to go to funny as that one has some more images. So let's try that one more time where we do the click and this time we are returning back the title the thumbnail, and then the link to the Reddit. And all of the content is being returned back as expected. And this is all coming from the Reddit API. So this is just the open version of the Reddit API. There is also a signed up version with it. And that gives you more flexibility on the content that you're able to access.